Joining me now with more on this potential threat is Michael Balboni, former New York State Homeland Security Advisor and the current director of Redland Securities. Uh, what do you make of this call for a this global day of jihad? Is this something, it's not the first time we've had one of these, but right. given what's going on today, should we take this seriously? So you're right that uh, we've had this before, and yet, but there are, this is a different set of circumstances. And it is, this is an incredibly emotional time. Uh, and so what you're going to see is that people are very, very skittish about this, and they're nervous. And so what you have to do is you have to produce calm. New York City has been the place of protests for decades. And New York City Police Department is probably one of the most experienced police forces in the world in separating groups with different types of opinions, making sure that, they, that you don't have this type of on-the-street violence. But then moreover, you know, there's infrastructure protection strategies that are in place right now. Yeah, but this isn't, it's not just New York City. It's, it's cities across right. the, all over the world that, that he's calling to have these protests at a time yeah. when we're seeing great um, emotion on both sides yeah. around this whole thing. Right. So I guess the, the thing that people are most concerned about is the call for bloodshed. Right. It's not not just this is not they're not calling for peaceful peaceful protests. And but yet if you study in the past types of terrorist attacks, what you realize is that it just doesn't happen overnight. And typically somebody from around the world calling for this type of action doesn't usually resonate and doesn't result in in a concerted attack anywhere in the world itself. That takes planning, that takes preparation, and you don't really have that. However, having said that, there's no way that any police force around the world is going to step back and say, well, we're not going to pay attention. Right. So there are they are telling folks, be aware and take certain steps, know who's coming to your building and do other things to make sure that you can limit the ability of people to um, perpetrate an attack. Yeah, you can understand why people might be unnerved. Um, my son called me from college because he saw it on yeah. social media, and he was like, "Is, right. is something going to happen on Friday?" Mm -hmm. um, you know, because this is just on the heels. It's six days after right. this appalling, uh, unbelievable attack committed by Hamas um, in Israel. Yeah. So intelligence experts are, are talking about that. This is just another part of the campaign. You know, it, it's not just enough to to create this horrific situation. You have to expand on. You have to use social media. You have to get out there and you have to put fear in people's homes to, to spread their message of hate. Mm. And so one of the things that schools, particularly in, in New York, and I think around the country as well, they're reminding parents that letting children watch these types of videos is a really bad idea. That without context, you're going to feed into their deepest fears, whether they're Christian or Jew or Muslim. You, you have to make sure that people understand that, they, that these violent images can have an impact, especially on younger individuals. And when in years past or in months past, I don't know when the last time was that the, the leader of Hamas called for a day of jihad, uh, have these been non-events? Yeah, they have not been. I, I recall that there was a specific uh, um, call to attack the Mall of America, uh, and, and this was several years ago. And and uh, when we talked about that, we said, well, there is no actionable intelligence. But nonetheless, people are going to pay attention, and they're going to know who's coming to the mall, and they're going to try to make sure that they have the ability, the, the incredible show of force, and then use the assets that they have, undercover police officers, informants, and, of course, what you have in major cities, especially in New York City, is use surveillance, which has been dramatically increased over the years. Are you surprised the NYPD is asking all officers to report to duty in uniform? We're talking, you know, detectives who normally are in plain clothes, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they want people to, you know, when you see an officer on the street, you'll know it's an yeah. officer on the street because he's wearing a badge and a uniform. Yeah. So it's a deterrent. New York City is, in New York City, is the home to the largest Jewish population in the United States. And then this is as much as a way to assure that population as it is to provide a show of force to deter anybody from doing anything. Okay. All right. Michael Baboni, thanks so much. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.